Good morning, folks. We've got notes on solar activity, deep triggers of volcanic eruptions, new sky scholar, climate, and possible signs Earth's magnetic field is tanking even more. We are starting with our star at spaceweathernews.com, and we find the last day in the sun with crackling active regions. There's rippling through the corona and incoming coronal holes. No solar wind enhancements at Earth, but we did get another M-class solar flare. It erupted on the departing limb on the north, also had a gorgeous CME leave the far side and yet managed to be visible from Earth-orbiting satellites. But with nothing coming at Earth, let's go to the ESA, where subterranean temperature anomalies tend to collide at volcanic hotspots. By tracking the above or below average temperatures of the lithosphere, asthenosphere, and upper mantle, they're able to determine that the pattern held true for both the Tonga eruption and La Palma. Folks, there are several new videos over at Sky Scholar if you haven't been keeping up. This is a complete deconstruction of the microwave background science. Subscribe and learn some high-level physics. Up next, it's the mainstream stories you can't seem to get away from online the last day. Super sea level rise projected within a few decades. Folks, do you remember a couple days ago when that article came out pleading for people to ignore their error ranges and uncertainties when it came to sea level projections? Just ignore how bad they are at it. Well, I read the report on sea level rise here and there is so much uncertainty in every vector that now I understand why that article about ignoring the uncertainty came out two days before. By the way, going to be challenging to hit those projections when the cold freshwater mount is already slowing glacier reduction. Of course, instead of continuing and reversing the trend, they still think it's going to be plugging a warming future. But on top of all of this, new bombshell shows that the high and even mid-range warming projections are wrong. This is not the first time we've seen low sensitivity published, but these are big names in a big journal and it's a big blow to the scary discussions of global warming. Last but not least, folks, the explanation that a predator spooked these birds is not terrible, but given that it happened across the world on the same day, the same day we saw geomagnetic issues and a rocket failure as it hit the ionosphere, says that this has magnetic field trouble written all over it. Of course, despite the fact that we've many times said to expect satellite and rocket failures during weak geomagnetic events, flocks of birds falling from the sky, and many other signs, the internet likes to blame humans or other birds. Mmm, I don't think so. But we greatly appreciate your support. Learn about Earth's magnetic field and the ongoing disaster event involving it with our book over at otf.cells.com. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 5 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.